In this video, I'm going to demonstrate installing ham clock onto a virtual machine in VirtualBox. Getting started, you're going to want to have VirtualBox already installed. I'm going to have a link in the software for the software down in the description below, and we'll want to download Ubuntu server software. All right, so let's get started with downloading Ubuntu server software. So we're going to search for your Ubuntu server download. And then this first link here will take us there. Uh, we'll just accept. And this is where we're going to click the button. I've already downloaded it but just to save time. So I have it downloaded now. But you'll click this and just save this wherever you want to. And we're done here. So we'll minimize that. Now we'll open up VirtualBox. So getting started with VirtualBox, we're going to click New. And here we'll give our VirtualBox VM a name. In this case, I'm going to choose where I want to store the VM. On this computer, I have more hard drive space on my D drive than C. So I'm just going to store it there. But just the default is fine if you just have one hard drive in your system. So here uh, we're going to, you'll want to click other and then wherever you downloaded the server version, you're going to want to click that and hit open. And it's going to pre fill this information out and you can just leave that. So that's all good. All right. So then under uh, this unattended install, I usually do not leave this information there because um, you're going to want to make it more personal to you. So go ahead and choose a username and set up a password. Um, and then I also change this domain name to hamclock.local. And this will make it a little easier to find it on your network after you've got everything installed. Um, so we'll hit our click down to hardware. Um, everything is good here. Uh, you want to be careful with these settings, uh, just depending upon what kind of computer you've got. Uh, this is going to actually, as long as the VM is running, this is going to take away memory from your uh, base computer. So, to, for example, uh, if you've only got eight gig of RAM in your system, you're not want to go. You're not going to want to go crazy with this number. Uh, so, leaving it default should be fine. Uh, same thing with processors. This is actually allocating the number of processors you want to put to this. Both of these numbers or defaults are fine. The one thing you are going to want to check is you're going to want to enable EFI. Um, that will just allow the Ubuntu server to install correctly. All right, so next we'll go to the hard disk, and this is good too. Just remember that this is going to actually carve out 25 gig of hard drive space on your computer. It is dynamic, but it could go up to 25 gigabytes. So you want to make sure you have enough hard drive space on your system to do that. Um, and then we're done with these settings. So you're going to hit finish. Uh, the system will start to power up. And uh, you'll actually see this where the virtual system will start to launch in this window. I usually close. Um, so here, if it does ask you this, you're just going to want to re-click or re-show the software where that CD was and hit mount and retry. And it should reboot itself again and find that disk. All right, there you go. Uh, and what I was going to say earlier is I just clicked that little box to make that go away. You can hit enter or just let the timer go out on its own. And then you'll actually start to see the OS and uh, unpack itself and, and start the installation process. It can run for a few minutes. Um, 
but then what we're going to wait for is the installation screen. I'll give this a couple minutes. One thing you're going to watch for while the screen is scrolling by is that it uh, does connect to or gets you onto the network. Um, and we're actually going to make a change to some network settings once this is all completed uh, so that you're able to get a real IP address, if you will, from your network as opposed to the uh, address that it will assign uh, by default at first, so um, still a little bit uh, left in this install, but I'm letting it run full, like running full time so that you're able to see and get an idea or feel for how long it should take to get to the screen here. All right, so what we're going to do is you're going to obviously pick your language. Um, uh, Depending upon when these images are built, I usually do always install to the new update uh, or it, the update here or updater. So we'll just click that. It's a really small file, so it should only take a couple seconds to download that. Um, and then it just makes sure that the image that you're trying to install has got the, the latest that's available at the time. Let this go. And again, I'm just letting things run at, at real time so that you have an idea of how long things should take instead of trying to speed things up in the video. Okay. All right, so we're done with the English selection. We are going to install Ubuntu Server. These these defaults are fine. Um, you can see here that the um, the the IP address is is uh, an internal address. We're going to make a change, so you don't really need to know this IP address at the moment. So we'll hit done here. Uh, we'll hit done here. We'll just let this test um, is just double checking that it does have good connection back to the Ubuntu servers when we start to install this. So again, like I say, I'm just going to let this run in real time so you have an idea. And once you see that the location is has passed you're you can hit done so it's should be any a couple seconds from now okay so we can hit done you're going to want to uh, use the arrow keys and uh, use the space bar to deselect that option right there um, you just want to use the entire disk in and without any um, extra encryption or anything like that. So you can just hit use the tab key and tab down to done. Here is where we're just hit done and it's going to start writing to the hard drive that you, we're going to use for the virtual machine. So you'll just hit done, uh, continue, let that run here. You just put your name in. Um, the server's name, we'll call it Hamclock. Um, pick a username and go ahead and set up a password. Okay, and you can tab down to done. Uh, continue. Um, click, uh, hit your uh, space bar, and we will want to install. SSH server in case you want to remote into the software without having to go back to this specific system. So we'll hit done here. Just tab down to done. We don't need any of these packages of software. 
and that's it. It will just let this run for a little bit. It's going to when, uh, install the system, and all we're waiting for is basically for it to say installation complete, and you'll be able to re reboot your system. So I may just uh, pause it here, and then we'll let this run for a little bit, and then I'll come back when it's done. All right, it looks like everything has completed. Well, now we will click on the window and tab down to reboot now. And this will basically update the system and run any patches or anything like that to, to get the system up and running. You may see this error message about the CD-ROM. Um, just when the message comes up, just hit enter and it will skip past that. Um, and then, then the system will start to reboot. And, I'll sh and we'll let it successfully get logged in. Now there's not gonna be a GUI or anything or a, uh, like you're used to seeing in Windows, this is just gonna be command line only, but it allows the system to be pretty uh, streamlined and low overhead. You, with this app, you don't really need to see a desktop. So that's why server is a good choice for uh, running ham clock. Let me just let this boot up real quick. And there's a little bit more to install because this is the first time the system's up and running since it's been installed. So we're going to use the username and password that we set up when we first were creating the VM and, the, and this. So what I'm going to recommend that we do now is type shutdown space now. And, oh, sorry, you got to do that as root. So we'll... You can do sudo shutdown now, and then you'll need to put your password in. Oh, I need to do a spell. There we go. So we're going to, once this shuts down, come back over to VirtualBox make this a little bigger and we're going to hit settings and then click on network right now this is set up as uh, basically you'll see here that lets the virtual adapter connect to your real uh, network inside your house in order to get a real IP from your router you it's you're going to want to change this to bridge adapter this system is on Wi-Fi, um, which is the network card in my real computer, and then choose adapter type, switch it to server, uh, and then you can just we can just hit OK, and then we're good on that. Then just hit start again, and what that will do is this will relaunch the server, but it'll have a, um, as I was saying before, it will give you access to a real IP, and I'll show you here in a second, because um, you're going to want whatever your IP addresses are at their 192.168. We're going to get one of those addresses, and then you'll be able to connect to the ham clock uh, across your network. So I'm just waiting for this to boot up. And one nice thing is, is that server's pretty quick about loading. Um, but what we're looking for is it to uh, to get it through. Okay, so we're good to go here. We are logged back in. All right. Uh, Okay, so here you'll see 
the uh, that you've gotten another real IP address. It's uh, the 192.168.1.123 in my case. So it will, um, and how I found that is I did the command IP space A, and that will show you everything that you've got as far as network adapters running. All right, so then what we'll be able to do now is let's get our little cheat sheet up and we're going to want to because this is a fresh install of the ubuntu server we're going to want to uh, elevate ourselves to our root user and we'll type in our password okay and then we we want to update and upgrade the system uh, to any latest patches. Um, so you'll do apt update and ampersand ampersand app upgrade dash y and that will just answer yes to all questions. So you'll hit enter and we'll let this run for a little bit. All right, so it's done now. Uh, what I typically do because it re it uh, updated a bunch of different things, and it seemed like it was quite a bit that it updated. I'm just going to go ahead and reboot the system, and it should go pretty quickly. And then that way, it just allows everything that was just downloaded a chance to uh, apply itself. Mainly just because this was an, a fresh out of the box install of server, so. We'll let this reboot real quick and then we'll get back to our cheat sheet. All right, so let's get logged in. Okay, so we will uh, elevate ourselves again by sudo command and then type in your password again. Okay, and uh, let's just double check to make sure that the IP address is still the same. So we've got uh, 192.168.1.123. So we will now go over to our cheat sheet. And this, is, so step one is going to be uh, installing some of the packages that we'll need going forward to get ham clock going. So we'll um, paste this in. All right, so what we're going to do now is we will open up uh, the command prompt and then that will let us SSH into our machine because what I've figured out is, is that Oracle box, the Oracle, the virtual box doesn't allow very easily the copying and pasting of commands. So what we'll do now is we'll um, hit, uh, click on start and then type in CMD and then uh, you're going to want to Quick run as administrator. 
and accept that. And then this will let you SSH um, and I had set my name and then you'll, this is where we will type in the machine and uh, IP address. And that's what we're gonna see right here when we look down as the, at the 192.168.1.123. Make sure I typed all that in correctly. So, Just wait for this to respond. Okay, so here we'll just uh, let it, uh, just because we haven't ever SSH into this computer before, we'll just type in yes. We'll put in our password. Okay, and now it's logging in, and we'll we'll this will let us start to um, copy and paste things. So we will elevate again to root, um, for people who don't feel comfortable elevating themselves to root, you can add your username into the sudo or admin group, but that kind of goes outside the scope of this video, but it is something you can do and just do a search on the internet for adding yourself to uh, the admin account so you don't have to keep putting in your password. All right, so we'll start with uh, spot one and in our, we can actually uh, let's minimize the virtual box system because now we're remoted into it. See now it'll let us uh, paste things in. Um, here we're going to um, just start installing the different packages that will help us with getting ham clock installed. Let this run. All right, so that's all completed. And then that gets us over to step two on our cheat sheet list here. We'll copy and paste that in and get that downloaded. This is just gonna download the ham clock app from the Clear Sky Institute. And now we will go over and go to step three. And that's going to be pretty quick. We're going to want to then change uh, into the ESP clock directory that was just created. Uh, if you just type in CD uh, and then space, and as you start to type, if you type it the way that like capital S, capital P, you can hit tab and it will complete the rest of the of the file name of the folder name. So now on to step five. This step is where you're going to actually create, uh, make the software package. Um, and this, according to the, the documentation that the Clear Sky Institute puts out, you can run it at a couple of different resolutions. I think a lot of people pick the 1600 by 960 as a default. And that's kind of what I have right here. So what we'll do is we're going to want to copy this make command and paste that in and hit enter. And then this is gonna run for a little while um, and it, while it builds the web only interface, um, and it's gonna download a bunch of different packages. So what I might do is just pause again and let this run and then I'll come back when it's complete. All right, it's all completed now. Um, so then we'll just move on to step six, where this is going to actually make the install package. So we'll copy and paste from line six in just that quick. So now what this will do is if you want to test it at this point, you can just run a uh, ham clock um, from the, when you're looking at step seven, you can just run that command. Or if you want, what the thing that you can do 
is uh, your, you can edit this processor file that what it will do is um, let us can, or add these lines of text so that every time you reboot this virtual machine, ham clock will run on its own. So we'll paste in that command. Um, I always pick one. Nano is just the, my editor of choice, so we'll click that. Now what we'll do is we need to use the arrow key, go all the way down and hit enter a couple of times. And then over on step nine, we want to grab all of this text here, copy that, and we'll paste that in. And then you're just, just we're going to want to write this to the file. So it's con control X, uh, hit Y for yes and enter, and that will get us back out. So now what you can do is you can, um, you can type in ham clock uh, ampersand that just runs the software in the background, gives us our uh, process ID. So now we can, let's open up a web browser and let's go over to 192.168.123. So, and one thing to remember is this is not a secure page. So I usually will type in HTTP instead of HTTPS, uh, then it's on port 8081. And then the file name is live.html. And if everything worked right, it should launch for you. And here you'd be able to put in your call sign. Um, I don't really know that there's very many other options that you'd want to change. And that kind of does go outside the scope of this video also. But when you are, when you've done that, uh, we'll go ahead and type in K4IZO and hit done. It will start to build and find the, the best uh, time clock for you and uh, do a countdown. And if everything works correctly, you should see ham clock pop up and that's how you run ham clock in a in virtual box right on a windows computer um, and that does kind of conclude this video if you found this helpful just please let me know in the comments uh, make sure you like this video because it helps the algorithm to push our content forward um, and hopefully you uh, are, do this and enjoy your new clock and with that, I'll say 73 and have a good day. KE4IZO is out.